All right, y'all. I was holding off from doing this video because I think probably 80% or more of y'all are not gonna believe me. I think y'all are gonna think I'm crazy and that maybe I belong in an insane asylum or that I'm just one of those people. But however, I've been meditating on it and just thinking about it and I just don't care. So if you don't believe me, I don't care because this is, this is the truth. And as someone who's worked in the psychiatric uh, facilities, in the psychiatric field for, for quite a bit, um, I have a degree in psychology and have studied psychology for about 20 years, right? Reading books and, and also reading spiritual books. I've come to this conclusion, and not only have I come to this conclusion intellectually, I've come to it experientially as well. And so here it goes. I'm just going to lay it out there. This may hit some of y'all hard, but I just got to say it. Many of us, even the Christians, even Christians, and maybe even especially Christians, have spiritual interference is going on. I'm going to try to say it as gently as possible. I came to this realization first off after experiencing demonic op oppression. And then I actually went to a deliverance minister and he removed uh, at least four demons from my life. And I could hear the demons and I've never heard anything like this before in my life. I swear this, this hit me out of the blue, but this guy really knew what he was doing and he made me tune in and remove these things. Um, right now, even as a Christian, if you are a Christian or even if you're not a Christian, you may have interferences going on, entities in your life embedded either external to watch over you or internal somewhere in your body that you had no clue that you had going on. And I'm not saying this to scare you, but I'll tell you something. When I discovered this through deliverance, I told the minister, I was like, this is weird. This is so weird. I've never heard any anything like this. I could hear the things speaking, and they didn't sound like any other voice I've ever heard before. Now, I've seen demons on the external. I've seen manifestations that, that were shocking, and, and they still, like, I still have impressions uh, I'm not scared of it because I had to work through that. The Lord kind of put me in a place where I had no choice but to work through it. And so I got over a lot of fear being in certain situations. And it made me stronger in Christ and strong in the Lord. I'm so grateful for that. But I had no clue that any of, anything like this could help, um, could affect me as someone who's constantly reading the Bible and immersing myself in prayer, um, been going to church lately, had no clue that this could potentially happen to me until I discovered what was going on. And I, let me tell you something else. So now, so now that you've heard the crazy part, let me just solidify this to where I'm telling you, this is not a made up conjured up belief. Here are the great things about this. When I got these things removed through Christ, through this deliverance minister, I've had so many benefits since then. Let me just lay these out. Number one, I've had absolutely zero inclination to drink or smoke. And I've never been a big drinker or a big smoker, but I've had compulsions from the past that have um, that have lingered, right? Where I would have to fight it. It was this battle, 
all the time. It was this big battle. None of that. None of it. So that's number one. The other one is a little more personal, sexual. Same thing. No desire at all for pornography. At all. I know you guys are going to think I'm crazy. You are going to think I'm insane and that I'm making this up and that this is some kind of big psychological trip. But I'm telling you, there is, there's none of that. I'm like a different person. I'm like a different person. I swear to you, I'm like a different person. These things, uh, a few of these were generational spirits, which means you didn't even bring them on yourself. They were just there in your body somewhere or embedded on the outside. And you, they've been assigned to you where you have these demons that were looking after you, monitoring you your whole life. Y'all, for two days after that, and I didn't want to get on here and say it because I, I, I still feel like people may think I'm crazy. But my conclusion on this is that if this helps somebody, then think whatever you want to think about me. Think I'm a kook. Think I'm a Jesus freak. Think that I'm just believe things and I'm gullible. Think whatever you want to think. But I'm telling you the results right here, right now. The, result, the results are no drug compulsion. And again, I was good at fighting. I've never been a slave to this, but I still had compulsions from early in my 20s and, and late teens because I did experiment. And I still had these lingering compulsions, right? Like every addict does. Um and I don't even I didn't even consider myself an addict, but once you've kind of indulged, there's that that compulsion, right? That thing where you're tempted. None of that. Sexual thing, same thing, no compulsion whatsoever to look at porn. Or to even look at a girl in the wrong way. I uh am now just looking for marriage. I don't care about having a girlfriend or anything like that. I'm just, I, I, it, it, guys, <laughs> this was such a paradigm shift. I count it in like at least the top five most profound experiences I've ever had in my entire life. Now, I started reading this book on the um, professor who developed this form of deliverance after my deliverance. And he starts saying in the book the exact experiences that I'm telling you now, not the end result necessarily, but about how what can happen is these spirits will embed themselves in your body, somewhere in your body, or on the external where they're monitoring spirits and they're going into other people and trying to affect you and telling other people certain things to try to get them to turn away from you. These things will diminish the more you get closer to Christ. And so he lays it out on a scale from one to 10. And this is what he says. He says, you may start off earlier when you fall into sin, where these things start getting stronger and stronger and stronger. They can get up to like a level five or level six. Um, the things we see in the movies, that's like a nine or a 10, right? We rarely see that. You don't see that in Christians, but you will and can have strong compulsions where it is like a five or six. And these things start basically uh, influencing you to do certain things. Well, what happens when you start immersing yourself in scripture or going to a church it diminishes their power down to like a one or a two. And so what happens is these personalities are still in you somewhere and they still have a minor influence, but it's just that it's so weak of an influence, nobody ever picks it up. They just live with it their entire lives and they still have these compulsions. They still have these either drugs, sexual, gambling, uh, anger, no anger. I'm not saying you can't push me into a natural state of anger. I'm not saying that. 
right? If it really gets strong, sure, I can go into anger. But I've been free of anger for a long time by the glory of the Lord. Um, I wasn't always like that. None. None. Praise the Lord. None. Uh, pornography, right? Every man, most men, I say 99, probably 0.9% of men have looked at porn, right? Unless you're a saint. You've probably looked at porn somewhere along the line. No compulsion to look at porn. None. <laughs> Praise God. I mean, there's no desire. The, the, the desire is completely gone. It's completely gone. There's none. I swear to you. I swear to you. I would put my hand on the Bible. I'm not going to do it. But I, if just just take my word for it. Take my word for it. Desire to smoke weed. Gone. Right? I used to smoke weed. There, I said it. I used to smoke weed. Gone. No compulsion to smoke weed. And it was instant. Once the thing was gone, once these things were gone, instant. Instant. The desire to drink. I started drinking probably around, had my first drink around 12. Have been drink in college. Have, have I wouldn't say I had a problem, but I've definitely done my share. And every now and then I'll say, hey, why don't I have a drink? No compulsion to drink. This has been such a profound experience that I kind of want to tell certain people, and I know they think I'm crazy. I know they think that, you know, maybe on, on some kind of trip, whatever. I don't care anymore. I'm telling you guys what happened and how I am now. After I felt such, I mean, I was like, my eyes were watering. And for the next two days after that, I was just like staring at ceilings in the wall. Whenever I wasn't doing my work, I was, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe it. Uh, the only thing it makes me of, and the reason why I'm sharing it, is because how many people around us have something going on that they are unaware of. They think it's just outside of their control, but can be helped through deliverance. Now, here's the key thing. Stick on this, because here's the key thing. And this is, this is why this is so important to listen to. And this is what I... Uh, discovered through studying the, the man, the, the minister who came up with this method of deliverance. These spirits will not leave. You can diminish them. And, and I'm not saying never, because I don't, I don't know. I'm not God. But this is what I got from the book. They don't leave because Jesus did not force them to leave. And part of the process is you have to identify them by name so you know who you're talking to and then command them through Jesus to get out, to pack up their bags and get the hell out. Otherwise, they'll still be there and they don't want to be discovered. They don't want to be discovered. So I can't tell you, guys, I, I've just, I'm still in the state. I'm probably going to go stare at the wall some more when I get off of this video because I'm still in a state of shock over it. And I've been kind of wanting to get on here and tell you guys about it, but some of you, some of y'all have already clicked off. And so the, the ones who are left that actually are staying with me, I've dealt, I've, I've helped counsel people with psychological problems. I've helped with, um, and I'm not a doctor, but I've helped with people who were diagnosing people with mental problems. I'm very aware of the, DS, the DSM and with um, psychological um, uh, names for, for people who just go off the deep end with religious things, fanatics, right? I get it. Trust me, I get it. That's none of this. This is real. It confirms the scripture in the Bible. It's real. And I never thought I would hear the things that I've heard and see the things that I've seen from going through this. I went through it 
out of curiosity. I didn't go to it because I thought I had these things. I thought there may have been some things that were trying to interfere with me, but I had no idea with what I found. And so let me tell you something. The end result of this is that I feel better than ever. Praise the Lord. I feel better than ever. I'm so happy. And it's all by the glory of the Lord. It's the glory of Christ. And it's the glory of the people who he works through that helped me with this. And so if you are considering, if you are considering this for yourself, 100% do it. Do it. Do it. You won't regret. The uh, worst thing that can happen is you learn something uh, about it and you just move on. The best thing that can happen is that you become free, baby. And you're like, wow. And you have your mind blown like me. So I'm going to get off of here. I'm going to go stare at the ceiling for probably 16 hours more. So I can, uh, <laughs> not really, but I may do some staring because I'm still in shock. I, I just, I cannot believe it. And I'm so happy. And uh, all glory goes to the Lord. It wasn't my doing. I did have to pay attention during it so I could identify these things. Um, I did have to communicate with the minister with what was going on, and I had to be honest. I had to be honest. So if you are not an honest person and you feel shameful that this may be happening to you, get over it. Just do it. Just get, uh, think of me when you think of it. Think, I'm getting on here on YouTube and just telling everybody my business. So think of me when you do it, first off. Um, but don't be shameful because this is awesome. God is awesome. The Lord put Jesus here for a reason. And if you think about it, through Jesus's ministry, I, I believe there were seven different instances where he delivered people from spirits. So it is real. I mean, if you believe in Jesus, then you know it's real. I used to think that this was all psychological. I fell into this trap where, oh, these people are projecting their own subconscious beliefs out in the world and all this bullshit. No, baby. No, baby. If that was the case, I would still have the same compulsions that I did before. But the Lord freed me. And I'm so glad. So feel free to share this video with someone uh, you think it could help. Baby, the Lord is great. Jesus is great. Glory to him. Glory to our Savior, baby. He's wonderful. And he has ultimate authority over these things. He's so good. He's so good. Thank you for tuning in.